Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we're going to learn how to add authentication to our Next.js application. We're going to be using this awesome package called nextauth.js, which makes it really easy to add different providers like GitHub Connect, Twitter Connect, Facebook Connect, etc. You can also do magic links, you can also do email and password, etc. We're going to add GitHub Connect to our app, and we're going to start out without a database, so just storing the information about our authenticated user in JSON web tokens. After that, and after we've seen it working, we're gonna add on a backend using Prisma 2 and Postgres so that we can store the session information inside of our database. So let's get started by taking a look at the app that we're working with. So let me just close everything out. Thank you to QuestForms for partnering with me on this video. QuestForms is a developer-focused form service ideal for web agencies and they just released version two of their product. One of the features that I like the most, if we head over to learn, documentation, advanced layouts, is repeater fields. So what this allows you to do is take a group of fields, so here we have the name and the type of ticket for an attendee, and have them repeated. So you can add more attendees and remove the ones you don't want anymore. And this is done with just a couple lines of code by wrapping field set around the field you want repeated. For a limited time, QuestForms is giving 50% off any annual plan for one year with the coupon code LEE50. So head on over to quest.io, check them out, and thanks again for partnering with me on this video. So just to give an overview of this Next.js app, right now we've got one page basically, this index.js. So why don't I boot up this app, uh, Yarn Dev, to get it going, and then we'll just go into the, uh, the web here. Refresh. So when it's ready, you're gonna see two buttons on the screen, one that says sign in and one that says sign out. Right now we don't have auth in this app, so these buttons do absolutely nothing, but that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So that's this page here. And this in Next.js, this underscore app.js is a special component that basically wraps around every single one of your pages. Right now, this is basically the default, whatever comes when you first install Next.js. We're gonna tweak this to provide uh, a provider that, that gives our session to the rest of the application. And now inside of the API pages, uh, pages API folder, inside of another folder called auth, I've got this special file set up that's named really strange. It's named with square brackets dot 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 next auth dot js. Now what this is in Next.js, it's basically a special catch-all uh, root that any sort of slash API, slash auth, anything that comes after slash auth will be handled by this uh, next auth page right here. So that's actually where we're gonna get started. Now I've already installed the package that we need, next-auth, and I've already got this um, default function that we're exporting. So remember, anything inside of the API folder runs on the server. So that's where we're handling the authentication aspects of our, of our app. So this function here receives the incoming request and a response. And instead of just responding here, what we're actually going to do is pass off the work to NextAuth. And to NextAuth, the first thing you wanna send are providers. So providers, it will be an array of them. This is where you can basically tell it, here's how I'm gonna allow users to connect. I'm gonna allow GitHub Connect, Twitter Connect, uh, email, et cetera. So we're gonna be using um, GitHub. So what we'll say is, uh, I th think it's like this, sorry about that, providers.github, if I could type. And we need to give it two things, a client ID, which will be something, and a client secret, which will be something else. Now, before we can actually go and do this, we need to go over to GitHub and create an app for our users to be able to connect to. So I've got my GitHub open here. I'm inside of my settings, developer settings, and I'm gonna create an OAuth app. So we'll just register a new application. So this will be called um, Next Auth Demo. Our homepage is localhost 3000. Uh, we don't need a description, just uh, demo, whatever. And then our authorization callback. So the way OAuth works, you basically send the user over to a different website, in this case, GitHub, they're gonna authenticate with GitHub and give permission to our app. And then what GitHub's gonna do is redirect the user back to our application with a code and a token that can be exchanged to get information about the user. 
So we need to tell GitHub where to send the user back to. So we're going to send them back to slash API slash auth slash callback and then GitHub. So in next auth, basically you replace GitHub with whatever provider you're working with. So it's always the same. It would be Twitter, Facebook, whatever. So we'll register this and this gives us the client ID, which we can go and um, we don't want to just paste it here because you don't want to commit your client ID into your code. So I've got this .env file .local. This is in the git ignore, so you wouldn't commit this. Wherever you're deploying to, you would have to set up your environment variables in that environment as well. So we're going to add the client ID here and then the client secret into this one. And I've already set up a next auth URL. This is something that um, that next auth wants whenever it's sort of linking around or redirecting, it wants to know what the URL of your app is. And we're also just going to at the same time set up these other two that are used when it's sort of encrypting cookies, when it's um, adding in the JWT secret so that it can verify that the token hasn't been tampered with. So I'm just going to take this secret here, paste it in, and then mess around with it a little bit. Paste it in, mess around with it a little bit. Do, do, do. Okay. So this is good, ready to go. And now what I want to do is go back over to here and replace this with process.env. Uh, I always want to say GitHub. GitHub client ID and process.env.github client secret. Cool. So with that in place, I'm just going to spin up the app for the first time. Again, because for it to pick up the, um, the different environment variables correctly, you need to reboot it. And it should say here in the info, loaded end from um, dot env dot local. And what we're going to do, uh, these risks, don't worry, this is Tailwind, which we're not even going to cover in this video. A couple more things I want to pass. Um, I want to get some debugging info. So it's a Boolean. But what we could do is have it be based off of our node env. Basically, whenever we're in the development environment, let's turn debugging on. We want to pass the secret. I believe it is. And if you're wondering where all these options are coming from, if you go into the uh, configuration options, here you'll see all the information about providers and then secret. So a random string used to hash tokens, sign cookies, and generate cryptographic keys. Um, if not specified, it uses a hash of all your configura configuration options, which is volatile and strongly recommended you do. So even though this isn't in their example, it's strong, strongly recommended. So this will just be process.env. What was it again? Auth secret. This is something I wasn't sure about. There's also a JWT secret, and I couldn't tell from their docs if this should be the same as my auth secret or different. So I just set them up as different and it seemed to work. So we're gonna keep going with that. And now I don't think I need to reboot this again, but I'm just gonna, just to be safe one last time. Okay, so we've got our backend basically set up to support auth already. Um, that's how long it takes, just a couple minutes to get GitHub Connect up and running. And now you can do stuff like go to API auth sign in. And what it's going to do is give you a page, if, if all works as, as I'm hoping it will. Um, it's going to give you a page with all of the providers that you've set up. Mm, cannot destructure property next auth of query as it is undefined. So I've obviously done something incorrectly. Ah, uh, yeah. Duh. I need to pass on the request and the response to this next auth. The option should have been the third one. So if you're following along, step that back and add in rec and response as the first two parameters. So now I'm going to go to uh, API auth sign in. And it's going to show me my options. So I just have one provider sign in with GitHub. So if I click this, it's going to bring me over to GitHub. And the first time you ever log in to this new app that we have, Next.demo, 
that with no logo or anything yet, but we're going to give authorization to this. So we got to enter in um, my password and then it's going to send us back. So it actually did send us back to the callback URL, but then that forwards me to our homepage again. So what we could do if we're interested is we could pop open this and go into application and look at the cookies. So it's set up a few different cookies. We've got our session token, CSRF, and the callback URL. So if you were to take the session token, um, basically what this tells us is it's storing all of the session information in a cookie, which should be HTTP only. And what that means is no other scripts on the page in JavaScript are gonna have access to this cookie. So it's uh, much safer than local storage, session storage, etc. And the value of it, if I copy and paste this and go to the JWT uh, website, I can paste in this here and it gives me all the information about what's stored inside of this uh, JSON web token. So it's got um, my name. GitHub doesn't give the email by default, so that's null. It's got my face, picture of my face, and then when this thing uh, expires. And then it's got some information about the, the signature and whatnot. Now, I can tamper with this if I want, but when it gets sent to the back end, um, basically it's going to verify that it hasn't been tampered with based on that JWT secret. So it's safe, the user can't sort of change their email to someone else, etc. So let's actually go and implement this part of it now. So we're going to do that on our home page, and I've already set up the import statements here. We're going to be using three um, functions. The first one we're going to start with is this use session hook. So this can be used on the client only. So if you're running any other server pages in Next.js, you can't use this hook. And the way you use it is you say const and you get access to the session, so whoever's logged in, and that would be the same information that's stored in that JSON web token here. And loading, if it's going to the back end to ask who's actually logged in, we're not gonna use that, so we'll just say use session like this. So now with the session, what we can do is we can say, uh, if there's not a session, then we wanna let the user sign in, otherwise, we're going to show the sign out button because that means they are logged in. So if I do this, you can now see that it's only showing the sign out button. And you could see for a second, like, mm, it's trying to figure stuff out. That's when you would use the loading to basically avoid that little stutter there. You maybe wouldn't even show any of this if it's loading. So what we want to do is let's focus on logging out first because we're currently logged in. So we're going to do on click. And on click, we can just pass in this sign out function that will be called when the user triggers the click event. So if I come back here and click it now, it's going to be logging me out, takes me back to the home page, and now i be able to log in. So here I can add in on click, sign in. So when I click that button, it's gonna take me to this page here where we get to pick from our providers and then we would go over to GitHub, they would send us back, and now we're logged into the website. So why don't we show who's logged in here, not just that sign out. So what we can do, let's wrap a fragment around this so I can put some more things. Um, we're going to put the name of the user in a span. So what we can do for that is session.user.name, spam name, Oh man, having some issues. Okay, so there, there we get Lee Halliday. That's whatever came through GitHub. And if we wanted to, we could even check if there's an image. So if session.user. Uh, was it image or photo? Oh, pit neither, picture. If there's a picture, we are going to put an IMG that has an SRC that has session.user picture and why don't we just add a bit of styling to give it a width of 25 pixels and let's make it rounded so uh, border radius uh, 50%. So with this in place it should have a picture if not I did something wrong session.user.picture 
why don't we just do a console.log to see what we're dealing with here? Because I, oops, outside of here. Console.log session. I obviously did something wrong. Okay, session.user. Oh, dot image. I don't know why this says picture over here. I don't know how that got messed up. Oh, I know why, I know why. That's what's stored in the actual JSON web token. But when you're asking for the session, I guess they do a little bit of like transformation on the raw data. Uh, for example, they add in the user object and then they rename picture to image. That's sort of weird. I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't just stick with the same variable name. But if I do that, come back, boom, this is turning into be a beautiful, beautiful website. Um, we're not going to cover styling in this because that would take me way too long and I sort of suck at it. So now we've got the name, we got my, my face and we've got the ability to sign out. And then once we log out, we can sign back in. Now, one thing I want to cover is that, um, you don't always have to take the user to that sign in page rather than calling this function directly. What you could do is pass an arrow function that gets called when clicked on. And then we can call sign in and we can say that we want to sign in with GitHub. So instead of sign in, we could say GitHub connect here. And then now when I click GitHub connect, it takes me directly to GitHub and back without having to go through that provider page. So you can definitely build your own um, login page and style all of the options however you want. You don't have to use the standard one um, that they give you. Okay, so this is basically up and running. What I wanted to do now is hop over to this global underscore app component and basically wrap a provider around the whole thing. And you're, the reason you would wanna do this is to basically, um, performance reasons. When you're clicking around a Next.js uh, website, rather than every page having to basically go back and to the server or look in the cookies and et cetera, what it can do basically do is use this provider context to, to basically cache that and just easy access to the session so that it's a little, more, a little bit more performant. And it wants us to pass session as page props like this. So with this in place, like I don't think you'll really notice any difference on this page um, other than that didn't work, session.user.name. All right, why didn't that work? Let's just refresh. No. All right, let's, keep, let's troubleshoot this. Um, let's look inside session. Console.log session. See what it has. Nothing. Hmm. So it doesn't like this and I must have done something, messed it up when I added in. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know why. It's not passing in all of page props, it's passing in the session attribute of the page props. Okay, that's what was wrong. There we go. Yeah, so that's, that's all good now. All right. It's amazing how many times you mess up, even though I just did this like an hour before recording the video. Okay, so we built the app. There's no database backend involved. There's nowhere to sort of store our users, store session data. It's all in JSON web token. Uh, the problem with that is that you can't really end a user's session because it's not tied to anything in the database that you can like delete or anything like that. And say you wanted to store like the user ID along with when they're saving data to the database or whatnot, it's sort of hard to do with how it's currently set up. So what we're gonna do is add um, Prisma and tie all of this to a Postgres backend. So I've already installed Prisma. There's two packages. You need the Prisma client in dependencies and you need the Prisma CLI over here in dev dependencies. And what we're actually going to do to start is we're gonna go into my table plus. So I'm logging into Postgres on my computer I'm just running it in the Postgres app on the Mac. 
And we're going to go in here and we are going to create a new database. And we'll call this the Next Auth Video Database. Just like this. So we've got a database. It's got no tables inside. I'm just going to close this for a sec. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy as URL because I'm going to need that connection string in a, in a little bit. We can open it back up now. So down here in the console, I'm going to say npx prisma client um, init, I believe it is. And that will set up all of the initial files for Prisma to work correctly. Oh, no, it's not Prisma client. It's Prisma CLI. This one will hopefully work. There we go. So you would want to read all this, but we're going to skip ahead. And it's added a Prisma folder for us with two things. The first thing is the env that has a database URL um, environment variable. We're going to replace that with the one we copied from, uh, from what is it called, table plus. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this stuff that doesn't matter. And we're going to say the database name. So what did we call this thing? Um, connection. No. Okay, we are in next auth video. So you do next auth video is the name. So once you deploy this thing, you would basically replace this with whatever connection string you have, whether that be on DigitalOcean, uh, Heroku, Postgres, wherever your Postgres lives. Elephant, I believe, is another hosting one. So with that in place, so typically you come and you can define your all of your schema here. But NextAuth actually comes with like a recommended schema for, for what, what it should look like, what tables you should have, what indexes, etc. So if we click into Models and Schemas, Postgres, we're actually going to copy all of the tables that they want us to create, come over here into our database, and paste it all in. So I just selected it and ran it all. So if I were to uh, refresh this, I can see that I have four tables now, accounts. Um, this stores sort of like some user connected with GitHub with this GitHub ID. Sessions, that's like Lee Halliday is logged in through GitHub and this is his token. It expires at this date. Users, information about uh, each user. One user could have many accounts. And then verification requests for email verification, which we're not going to cover today. So you can customize all this if you have an, an existing tables or you want to call them something else. But then you have to configure next auth. And I don't want to do that. I just want to stick with what we've got. Now, with this in place, I could come here and I could say uh, Prisma CLI, um, I think it's called introspect, which basically goes and looks at your schema and generates your database schema and generates your Prisma schema based on what it sees in the database. Now, the problem is it calls the model users with a lower U, S on the end, because that's what the table looks like. But what um, NextAuth actually wants is slightly different. So if you look at Prisma and you scroll down a little bit to Prisma Schema, it wants things to look like this. So what we're actually going to do is just copy and paste this and then replace the generated stuff. So you didn't actually need to generate it. We're going to paste it with what... Um, what next auth recommends and it's basically just a mapping of what they recommend the schema to look like to what the database actually um, has in terms of table names and and column names etc so with the schema set up the next command you want to do is uh, npx prisma cli generate and what this does is it generates what's called your prisma client um, so it's it's set up with it, it's aware of all of the tables and all the columns they have, etc. And it tells you how to import this into your app. So what we can do now is go and configure next auth to use Prisma. So we're going to go back to this one file here. We're going to uncomment adapters and we're going to uncomment uh, Prisma CLI, the Prisma client. So we need an instance of the Prisma client. So we can just say uh, const Prisma equals new Prisma client like this. And then what we can do is set up the adapter to be adapters.prisma.client. 
dot adapter, and then we'll pass in this instance of Prisma here. Okay. So with that in place, I think we're ready to go and try this out and make sure that it can save users inside of our database. So we're going to reboot this um, Next.js application. So it's up and running. We will go here. We're just going to sign out uh, quickly. Sign out quickly. It's because I just booted the app. Okay. So we're going to click GitHub Connect like normal. It's going to go send us back. So it looks like nothing has changed, right? But if we go and open up the database and we click into users, we can actually see that it created a user for me. So Lee Halliday, uh, it's got my image in here. And this user has many accounts. So just the one account for now. But basically, we have my user ID one uh, via OAuth, GitHub, this is my GitHub ID and the token. It's also got for some information about my session. So how long does this session last for, for user one? Um, when does it expire? So if we were to, for example, sign out and then come back here and refresh, it's removed the session. So once the user logged out, nobody else can reuse that session. And that's the beauty of storing it in the database. You can also do things like um, say you log in or you log out on your on your phone and sometimes it asks you, do you want to log out on all of your accounts? By having it in the database, you could delete the sessions in the Chrome browser on a tablet, on the phone all at once and basically log the user out everywhere rather than just the device that they're logged in on, um, which you could only do when you're... that You'd be stuck with that if you were just using JSON web tokens without a backend of that. So that's everything I wanted to cover. I know I didn't style it very nicely, but just to uh, go over what we covered today, we covered three main files. So the first one was this pages API auth, this weirdly named file. This is the backend which handles all of the requests to the backend. If we were to actually look at the network tab and then let's do some filtering for uh, API auth. So if I GitHub connect and then it comes back, you can see here it's, it's, uh, it's calling API auth callback um, slash API log or auth. If I log out, it's going to make a, a post to API auth sign out. There's API auth CRSRF. So by setting up this up, it's receiving all of those requests in the client. We set up with just GitHub, but you could add in, they've got like 20 providers you can choose from, including your own email. You can build your own custom ones. They're actually really easy to create sometimes. They're just like a few lines of code uh, if it's an OAuth provider. We're debugging, we've set up our secrets, and then we, eventually we added in a Prisma adapter to store this info in the database. We have this underscore app component that wraps around and provides a context for our session to every page within our Next.js app. And then we've got our actual page itself, the client facing uh, user page, where we used use session to find out if the user logged in or not. And then we used the sign in and the sign out functions to uh, log the user in and out. And we showed how to basically override bringing it to that page where it shows all the different login options. If you want to customize how it looks yourself. So that's how to do authentication in Next.js. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye.